We just made it into Mexico City and we've only got three days here. So we're gonna try to jam pack with as much awesome stuff as we possibly can. And not only that, but the best part is we get to travel with our parents again. So for today, we're gonna be checking out most of the downtown, going to a bunch of street food markets, just enjoying the awesomeness that is Mexico City. And then tomorrow, we're gonna go much further afield and hopefully end the night with some Lucha Libre. Let's get going. So we've been out here, we've walked maybe like four blocks total, and we've already passed probably 20 taco trucks slash little, I don't know, movable things with umbrellas, what do you call them? Stands, taco stands, sure. All of them selling tacos for like 50 cents each. It's so hard to decide which one to go with, they all look so good. After passing by at least 40 more uh, movable things with umbrellas, we came across the perfect place. Guess what do you got? I'm not really sure, but it's some kind of carnitas piled with salsa, cilantro, and onion, corn tortilla, or deep one. Mmm. That's tasty. Holy cow. So tasty. 40 pesos, about $2. I'm pretty sure this will feed both of us. I don't know how to approach this thing, it's so big. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. It's like fried and the meat has been cooked for so long, slow cooked for so long, that it just like disappears in your mouth as soon as you eat it. There's tons of avocados on here, there's like half an avocado inside of this thing. And that salsa's, that salsa's pretty spicy. There's only one thing to have after a meal like that, and that's some more chata. Oh, that's so good. It's so refreshing. Cinnamon, rice, sweetness. Really warm today, so it's refreshing. Oh my god, I'm so full right now. That was so good. Now we're off to the historic center of Mexico City. It's very busy, very loud here. We'll be there in a little bit. First we had to go pick up the parents and then out we went. We're trying to go to the places that you see normally when you see Mexico City, the Central Historical District. First, we gotta figure out the metro system. There is supposedly a card, a rechargeable card that you can buy for the metro here. For some reason the kiosks here weren't working, so we just went up to the vendor, bought four tickets, and here we are. It costs 20 pesos for the four of us, so five pesos per person, which is 20 cents to get on the metro. Now we're waiting and we're heading to Centro Historico, the central district. The train was beeping very, very loudly, and then we all just had to get off, and we didn't know why, we didn't know where to go. And then this lovely woman came and stopped and asked us where we were going. She told us to transfer here and told us where to get off. There are so many friendly people here. Per usual, my parents are like 300 meters ahead of us. <laughs> they're, they're always cruising, so we're always just trying to catch up with them. It's so beautiful. I had no idea that Mexico City had so many parks like this. Incredible, huge, really nicely shaded, super safe, super nice. And there's like people skateboarding and you can buy ice cream. It's just, this is a whole side of Mexico City that I honestly didn't know existed. What do you think? Wow. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Okay, so this place costs about four dollars to get into. We're inside of the Palace of Fine Arts right now. And there's an additional surcharge if you bring in a camera like the one we have. They charge an extra buck and a half for it. This is a beautiful building. I honestly, I don't know what to do here. I think we just walk around and look at stuff. We've maybe been here for about half an hour and we did get to see some really cool artwork, some really historical pieces of art about Mexico City, some beautiful murals from some of the most famous muralists here. No, now I'm kind of like, what do we do? What we actually wanted to do was see the place from the outside, so of course, we went to Sears. I haven't been in a Sears in a really, really long time. 
eight escalators later, we came to Sears because of this. So Sears on the top of the eighth floor has this cafe here, but it has this amazing view of the Palacio. I don't even know where else you can get this view. And it's really peaceful and pretty up here. It's great to see. And the coffee and tea was surprisingly not expensive. Like I was expecting it to be like six to ten dollars per coffee because how great the view is, but it's only like two bucks. This is a great find. I think this was you. Good find. It was me. Good find. <laughs> Good find. From up here, all we could hear is the noise from the busy street below. Time to investigate. different things we're finding just in this like 10 minute walk. I mean we just went to the Palace of Fine Arts, we went to the cafe and now we're going to this beautiful post office apparently. But we passed by a book market, the National Palace, it's so colorful and vibrant here and there's like a peacefulness to it. I don't know, I love the city so far. Okay this is a pretty cool post office. A really cool post office. I love how old but also classic everything feels in here. This the old elevators that don't work, but I don't know, maybe they would, and all of it's made out of like this kind of like mixture of brass and steel and gold, and it's just like just a gold explosion everywhere you look. I bet this was pretty spectacular when it was running at full steam. It'd be really cool if there was like Beauty and the Beast music playing right now. <laughs> So we're in the central historic zone of Mexico City and we're on our way to Zocalo, which is the main square. We're on a walking street that's like just next to Avenida Cinco de Mayo. And it's just this beautiful pedestrian only street. You kind of feel like the buildings are coming in at you as you're walking in because they're like five stories tall and you can't see anything. And then it's just oof, this huge empty area <laughs> with this massive cathedral in front of it. You can really tell this is, this is an important place. I honestly had no idea how incredible Mexico City was. It's so lively. Look at the giant flag. It's cathedrals, palaces, museums. There's so much street food. There's dances everywhere. There's music everywhere. I, I love the city already. So we're in the area right next to the Zocalo and this is right above the Templo Mayor Museum. And Templo Mayor, I was reading, is the main temple of the Aztecs, who once were the inhabitants of Mexico City. Apparently, when the Spaniards came, they unfortunately destroyed the temple and used those pieces to build the cathedral. But I think until the 20th century, people started excavating and they found ruins that exist right next to the cathedral. There's so much history here. We found some elote on the way. This one looked like it had been grilled for a while. And they ask you if you want cheese, and I said yes. And spice, yes. So they layer it all up, um, mix all the layers. It's the best on the go snack. Mm. It's chewy and crunchy. Oh, that's spicy. That's good though. It's tart too, like kind of sour and spicy. Mm, it's still kind of spicy. Good. There's a bunch of different ways to get around Mexico City. There's like 20 gajillion buses, taxis everywhere, metro, metro buses even. The cheapest way for sure is to take the subway or the buses. It's like 
25 cents per ticket. But I think that for us tourists to get around, it only costs like three or four dollars to take an Uber basically all the way across the city. So for a bigger group, it makes a lot of sense. So that's what we're taking to get all the way back to our place, which is like a 20 minute drive from here. To go to dinner we saw this place called el kiosquito which was right across the street it might be a chain but there was a lot of meat in front of the window and it looked really good we're gonna eat some meat oh my gosh did not expect that it looks like there's carnitas rice beans a little bit of everything i love combo plates and this is Pretty awesome. Tastes really good. Apparently they're known for their cutting this here. We're at the place that we go every single night before we go to bed, which is uh, the nearest OXO or Circle K. We just come here to pick up our sweet treats, thing of water. I don't know why I'm telling you about a 7-Eleven trip. 29, 15. <laughs> All right, it's getting dark, so I had to head back in. I think it's time to talk about something that's probably on everybody's mind about Mexico City, and that is safety. So when my parents said they were flying into Mexico City and Lisa was really excited to go meet them, honestly, I felt pretty scared. So the last time that I was here in 2017, I literally got mugged on the street in broad daylight in the direct view of two police officers who did absolutely nothing. I lost like $300, $400, something like that. It's my fault for carrying around so much I had just got into the ATM. Stupid mistake by me. Ever since then, whenever I think of coming to Mexico or when I think of coming to Mexico City, I just kind of get freaked out. So what I'm really hoping for from this trip, more than anything, is that I get a little different perspective on Mexico City and that I stop being so afraid of it. But today, walking around, once I sort of got over that, uh, that feeling that I had had coming in here where I was just scared of everything, I started feeling pretty awesome. And I'm really hopeful that this city is gonna show me a different side of itself than what it did last time we were here. If any of you out there have tips about how to stay safe in Mexico City, I'd love to hear it, and I'm sure everybody watching this video would also love to hear it. Tomorrow we're gonna be going a little bit further afield. I'm a little nervous, but also really, really excited. All right, see you in the morning. just got to the town of Teotihuacan, which is what we got on the bus ride for. We're gonna go see the pyramids. It's about an hour long bus ride. It's pretty comfortable. It costs only 60 pesos one way, so about $6 round trip per person. An hour ride and here we are. We're gonna go see the pyramids. We got our tickets, ready to go. Uh, each of the tickets were 90 pesos each, a little under $5. We had to pay extra for the camera. I think it was 50 pesos to get the camera in, so no big deal there. And now I think we just keep walking. Is that a pyramid up there? sounds here and it's not because there are animals here I mean there are some dogs here but they're definitely sleeping they're like people that sell these whistles that make either jaguar sounds or scary bird sounds like so this pyramid of the Sun is absolutely massive it's really hard to show the scale on camera but it's huge last time that I was here you could actually climb all the way up to the top and then they close that down I'm gonna guess due to COVID yeah due to COVID and also due to uh, apparently people were stealing rocks and taking them home. Real cool, way to ruin it for everybody guys. Uh, 
I never know what to say in places like this. Like, I don't just want to sit here and give you a history lesson about something you could just look up on Wikipedia that I just looked up on Wikipedia. So we got this Explore Teotihuacan app. God, did I say that right? Teotihuacan. <laughs> you definitely deserve better than that. But there's so much to be interested in here. The construction, the history, the people, the place, everything. It's just incredible. Just go. You just gotta go. After a full day at the pyramids, we hop back on the bus and had the absolute perfect soundtrack for the ride home. This bus station is massive. It just feels like everybody comes here at least like once during their trip. We're gonna grab an Uber. We found what is hopefully gonna be an awesome restaurant that we're really excited about right next to our place. Let's go, we didn't eat anything yet. Super hungry. Cause see, we haven't eaten since breakfast and our mid-afternoon snack. It's about 3.30, starving. Everything smells really really good and it seems like everyone's out to eat so now's the right time. This area just a little bit east of our place, I think it's called Juarez, is super cool. I'm really impressed by all the greenery, all the plants, like just how wide the sidewalks are and there's so many interesting looking restaurants everywhere that we go. We couldn't agree on just one place so we just bought everything. What did you get? Española. So much food, gringas, tacos. Galore. Everywhere that we walk, it's like this whole city is like a giant buffet. There's so much food, so much street food, everything smells so good. So we just got a bunch of street food and we're gonna eat it and drink some beers back at our place. <laughs> what you got over there? Well, I think these are all your tacos. Did you get, that's the steak gringa, I think. Chorizo tacos? But con queso? Pastor tacos? How many tacos did you order? <laughs> I heard Mexico City is known for their tortas. Oh, that's good. There's cheese, I think pork. Whatever milanesa is, which I thought it was chicken, but it might be this, like a thinly breaded piece of meat. And then avocado, tomatoes, and cheese. This is really good. And it's on a soft, crunchy roll. 65 pesos, I still have half here, $3. I'm kind of feeling like this is the dream here, you know? I feel like we've been messing up going to all these restaurants when there's all this good street food available everywhere. We passed probably 40 different taco trucks. Do you think, is that an overstatement? No. I had always wondered how you eat the corn tortillas without having them fall apart all the time, but I just realized that all the ones I had in the United States were cold. And it seems like warm corn tortillas, they stay together a little bit better. So these are like super hot to the touch. That is spicy. Oh, that's spicy. It's red one. Oh my god. Yeah. Tastes like good choices. Day two was a day well spent. All right, we're starting off day three right next door to our apartment to the one place that we actually haven't gone yet, which is Chipotepec Park. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but trying my best here. This is a massive park right in the middle of Mexico City. We've heard it's beautiful. I just think it'll be a nice relaxing way to start up the day. Honestly, I had no idea how green Mexico City was. I knew it was a really big city. It's actually one of the most populated cities, I think, in the entire North America continent. I think there's 20 million people, but it's it's so green and then there's all these skyscrapers and it's awesome to see that there's so many people utilizing these parks. I had no idea. It's, it's beautiful. So the centerpiece of this park is this absolutely massive castle. This is apparently the only castle in North America. Not only that, but they filmed Romeo and Juliet here. And in case you were wondering, it's the Claire Danes and Leonardo DiCaprio version of Romeo and Juliet. 
when you walk up to it, you just kind of see the small facade, but that's actually just where you go to buy the tickets. And then you look up and it's just huge castle up on a hill. So, and it's things like this walking up this hill that makes me remember that Mexico City is actually at like 7,000 plus feet of elevation. I'm out of breath just like walking up a tiny hill. We've come a long way in the wrong direction since the Camino. I thought it was going to be just a beautiful building, which it is, but I thought it was going to be like a replica of what it was like to live here. The Viceroy, the Emperor of Mexico, and a couple of presidents of Mexico actually lived here before. But it turns out they transformed this entire place into a National History Museum, which is awesome. It showcases a lot of beautiful art and a lot of important art. There's signs that indicate things like agriculture, liberty, freedom, and even though we can't understand everything because most of the plaques are in Spanish, it's incredible to see the artwork in this castle. The contrast is fascinating that someone so wealthy and so powerful had a castle here. Now it's a museum for the people. Very cool. limón. <laughs> Ice cream, helado, Oreo, and I think this is coconut, he said, but it looks like birthday cake because there's like sprinkles in it. So we're staying in an area right between the La Contessa and the Roma area, and it's really cute so far. There's a lot of trees and a lot of restaurants, a lot of people out. It's like 2.30 p.m. Looks like we just came across the park with a clothing market. Very exciting. Is that the Statue of David? <laughs> that is. I presume a replica. I think this park is kind of like right on the outskirts of La Roma, so we're just getting into the area. It feels very relaxing. Some of the streets in between felt very much not relaxing, but oh, there's more street food up there. Ooh. Okay, so we're at Tacos Ordeña, I think is what it's called. I'll show you the sign once we get there. But I ordered a gringa here, which is kind of like a giant cheesy taco. And just look at the size of the pastor thing that they have here. Just, I mean, like, just so big, it like pulled me in like a gravitational field. So these are the Papas Orinoco, which is their like, which is their like house special potatoes. And they take the baby potatoes and then they cook them in, I think, the pork fat and then just smash them down after they're nice and soft. That's good, you gotta try this. This is so good. You get more yes. <laughs> Your favorite. This this restaurant knows me. They understand me. <laughs> this is so good. It's just like it's the perfect amount of char to meat, and the pastor flavor like really comes through super strong. And then you get a little bit of sweetness off the pineapple, and then it's just super savory. <laughs> We made it back home just in time for tonight's main event. We're back, we're back. All right, so we are about to head to our first ever Lucha Libre experience. Uh, so we got tickets earlier. To be honest, I don't really know what to expect at all. The number one thing that you see on Google reviews, people love coming to relieve stress. This is the attendees that say that. Yes. All right, we're up. I'm not sure how we get in. We have our tickets already. We just need to like get in. All right, so we just got searched top to bottom. All right, we're going in. I think we're checking our tickets now. God, it's crazy. <laughs> Totally out of control in the best way. <laughs> okay, so that was absolutely nuts.
sucks from start to finish. There are people flipping around. And then the good guys are winning. And then the bad guys are winning. And then I heard, I think, probably every conceivable Spanish swear word that could possibly exist. And then we got a bag of nachos, and we're just having the best time. This is the coolest thing. The introductions kept getting more and more bonkers as the night went on, and the matches just kept getting more intense. It was the perfect show. <laughs> it's absolute wonderful chaos from start to finish. Wow. And the athleticism on display here is just next level. I mean, right, this is obviously scripted and just for fun, but none of that matters. Every match out here is life and death to the crowd, and it's impossible to not get swept up in it. Unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do you guys think? It's awesome! It's like world Wrestling and Cirque Soleil had a baby. <laughs> I haven't seen that many acrobatics in a really long time, but that was pretty impressive. And people are so excited, it's so cool. You want one of those masks? <laughs> what a way to end our last night in Mexico City. I mean, three days here is obviously not enough. We honestly just scratched the surface. All the awesome street food, the incredible history and culture, and the kind strangers along the way. And there's so many more neighborhoods to explore here, and they all feel completely unique. $100 per day felt pretty right for our style, but you can definitely travel here for way less than that. Oh, and my earlier worries? Well, I can tell you that I feel a lot safer now at the end of this trip than I did at the beginning, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. It's just such an awesome city. It sure would be a shame to write it all off because of a single bad experience that I had 10 years ago. Mexico City is just too good to miss. <laughs> Alright, you guys got everything? Gracias.